Good morning, everyone. We are going to talk blockchain today with Evan. And Evan knows his shit. How is blockchain? How long has it been out now? Uh, what, 2008 was when the uh, Bitcoin white paper got published and the first node started launching, so 11 years. And the always story I hear is the guy who bought pizza with the blockchain. Oh, yeah, what was it, 19,000 Bitcoin? I don't even want to do the math on what that'd be today. It's it's uh, some in the 190 million, 1.9 billion, one of those two. Really, what, that that big a number? Yeah, it's ten thousand dollars of Bitcoin. So yeah, add four zeros to nineteen thousand. <laughs> well, I think we're on a, a, a hell of a, a traffic jam as we talk about Bitcoin. But um, the stable a coin was what was the name of that one? Yeah, one that, so the I, I guess you know to give some some context to that, uh, we were talking. You know about the uh, fantastic, be fantastic app, and he was looking at you know evaluating the concept of maybe doing some sort of token for it, and the uh, idea of having a stable cryptocurrency uh, came up, and I said that you know that's actually in existence. There's a, a lot of different stable coins. Uh, stable coin being a asset, or in this case, a cryptocurrency that is pegged to a real world asset, and and case of Tether, which is the most commonly used one, uh, USDT, is uh, it's pegged to the US dollar. And basically what that means is every, uh, you know, there's an, a central authority that issues one token per dollar they put into the bank. So there is a physical dollar backing every token. Uh, this allows it to basically stay, the value of the token to stay at, at or exactly at or right around one dollar. So it fluctuates, we'll call it like 0.01% uh, from time to time, just based on supply and demand. Uh, but ultimately, it's a stable coin. It's an easy way for people to get in and out of cryptocurrencies uh, into something that isn't anywhere near as volatile. So you can actually sell Bitcoin for Tether, in this case, uh, and many other stable coins. And you can actually hold your now you know, net worth or whatever it is in this particular stable coin and not have to risk any volatility of the Bitcoin market crashing or skyrocketing and whatnot. So to launch this um, Be Fantastic coin... With the fantastic coin, we'll call it. How's that sound? Even sounds better. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, someone would go on my on my app or my website and say, "Okay, I want to buy a hundred bucks worth." They deposit through Zelle or any other sure. other method into that um, algorithm, or, or I guess it's um, an app inside yeah. the app, and then they get a hundred co- tokens. And then they could buy it. Uh, uh, would it be accepted everywhere that token, or no? Would it be accepted everywhere? Yeah, no, likely like in no. no. Um, but uh, <clears throat> what you could do, um, for instance, like I know we have a product with stickers. And so for you, you could have a Be Fantastic sticker and you could actually back it with some amount of money. Um, whether that be dollars, uh, our cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, potentially at some point, uh, whatever it is. And that person could have a, just imagine a sticker that's really just a digital wrapper, right? So it's, it is a sticker visually, but behind that is like a very low-level software system that contains basically a code uh, that can redeem can be redeemed for that value. So if you were to send that to me, you know, as a Be Fantastic sticker to get me kickstarted, and it's worth three bucks or five bucks or something like that, and it, you know, the the mechanism for you might be download the app and plug this in, right? Right. Uh, so now I get this cool sticker, I can show my friends, but I also have this incentive that maybe it's even just an in-app currency, right, for you. And now I can go to the Be Fantastic app and I can now basically type in the promo code that was associated with this token and be issued a you know credit on your app to, to do something cool like send five stickers to my friends. So yeah, I mean, those, these things are all becoming easier and easier to do. You know, you don't have to be a developer to come up with your own token anymore. Um, what would it cost me to have a Be Fantastic uh, sticker or coin? Um... I mean, realistically, you know, whatever you want to do, it sounds like you already got all the design stuff done, right? So you kind of just, you have it. I mean, I'm just looking through the lens that, that I work through. Right, right. So, I mean, if you wanted a thousand of them, right, and you wanted each one to be worth a dollar for the time being, I mean, realistically, let's just call it a thousand plus five percent, you know, let's just call it 1050. Uh-huh. I don't know. Um, that would be on the very cheap side. Uh, and if you wanted to go do your own token issuance, uh, like an ICO or something like that, where people can buy in, uh, that would be, you know, 
a, a whole other story. You probably need some some developers or at least some developer help uh, for that. Oh, oh, oh. But that's been kind of the um, the way people raise money in the space. Uh, it's worked well, but now the SEC is kind of cracking down on regulations, and you know I don't know if you want to run down that rabbit hole. <laughs> well, eventually you're going to go public with this because this is a global movement. So if this kicks in, like it, in theory it should, because everyone loves what I'm doing. I mean, if everyone didn't love what I'm doing, it would um, I would stop it. But everyone seems to see that there's a value here because we are in a greedy, selfish, litigious world. We need to limit that or, or curb it a bit, right? And we need to be positive about our lives and, and what we're doing and be fantastic. And that's... And it's resonating. And it's really exciting that people get it. And some people get it immediately. And some people, it takes a couple minutes, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, this is my, like, third third Uber ride with you, so... Uh, is it really? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's so, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Well, we're neighbors. It, it is it fantastic. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes I mean, a little it makes sense. sense. You yeah. actually picked me up at the airport once. Oh, is that right? Where you took me. Yeah, uh, oh, I, I vividly remember this. So, you know, you're doing a good job of leaving an imprint. Well, I guess that's a good thing. What do you think about the beard? Hey, man, I'm a fan of the beard. Oh, yeah? Wow, yeah, mine's not quite as solid as yours, but... Uh, I'm Santa. I, already, I got my first booking the other day. So, <laughs> December 23rd, I'm already in one party. Oh, I got that, man. That's I'm meeting a guy Friday. He wants me to do a whole week at his hotel. So we'll see what happens for Christmas. I did it for the grandkids, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. I'll, I'll be at parties and girls will come up and say, Can I touch it? <laughs> <laughs> They'll go like this, you know. Hey, everyone likes a good beard. I guess. I guess they're in, you know. I mean, I just, it just was a natural thing. Because um, my, my granddaughter said, Santa doesn't have a short beard. She, she said that on <laughs> December 25th. And that's when I started growing it. Pretty funny. Oh, man, so it's been a year-long project. Yeah, it's well, 10 months, 11 months now, yeah. Well, not quite 11 months. Almost 11 months. Oh, good for you. And um, people don't recognize me. It's so funny. I walk up to people I know and they're talking to me and they don't have any clue it's me because it's not me you know yeah, it's yeah. a guy with a big long beard now it's, uh, my wife doesn't like it but and, you know, she has to look at me more than I do <laughs> that's a good point so yeah I definitely need to um, do some more research and because I think it adds value to the movement especially if we have a concert right yeah. Because that's what the way I feel to move the movement forward is to um, create entertainment, whether it be my cooking show or a TV show or a, any kind of media where the, the word gets out more, you know, especially concerts. Because music, I found recently um, that sound and music are extremely therapeutic. Imagine right now a song comes on that you love, you're going to feel better because the song yeah, came on. No um, and 40 hertz sound, by the way. Um, I downloaded it. It's 99 cents on Amazon. And you should just play it in the background. It's extreme. It gets rid of diabetes. All kind of different things. They've proven. So that particular frequency yeah. has some sort of like resonance. one mile, make a left turn yeah. on psychology. Santa Monica Not psychology, Boulevard. health. Health. Actually, because we're all you know, sound waves. I mean, we're all electronic. Um, or electronic synapses, right? And that those waves help the body restore probably study up a bit more on it, I forgot, but it's definitely um, worked, but they proved it, you know. It's pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah. A lot of stuff out there people don't know, and that's what I like about my radio show and my um, my, my podcast, is we're bringing information, technologies, to people that don't have a clue about their telomeres, I think I told you about that last time, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of stuff people don't know what's going on in the, in the in their bodies, in their mind, and in the world. They just don't know. Oh, there's just too much to know. There's too know. much to know. It blows my mind how much information's out there. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, on the 27th of this month, everyone listening in, um, is my third uh, motivational meeting at the at the uh, yacht club in the marina, the Windjammers Yacht Club. It's free. Awesome. 6 p.m. I'd love you to join us. Um, it's really pretty cool. It's, it's a gathering of fantastic, like-minded, positive people. And um, well, the guy last uh, last month told a story about his good friend, um, who I actually met once before, um, the astronaut uh, Buzz Aldrin. Oh wow! And Buzz and and um, his fellow astronaut were cruising around space, 
and they looked out the window and there was a a globe a, a, an orb following them you know pacing them on the side yeah, yeah. and as they looked at it it was pacing them 17,000 miles an hour however fast it goes then all of a sudden it shot up to the right in an instant was this while they're in space? yeah And uh, so then, I, um, but my actually, my son actually saw an orb in in Ojai. His, his wife saw it first. It left, and she yelled because she's you know this glowing orb without making any noise and floating in the backyard. It's pretty amazing at night, right? So I'll take this with uh, without even asking. Is you think that we've uh, we've been contacted by <laughs> intelligent life? They intelligent life visited Earth before man was here. All right, because we had resources here. Um, and if you just look at the history, or the written history of mankind and cave drawings that depict flying saucers and spacemen uh, to even um, before there was flight, um, what is his name, uh, Christopher Columbus yeah, yeah. wrote in his log before discovering America on his way that in the middle of the night, they were on him and his officers were on the top of the ship because, you know, the right events, right, in the sure. captain's log. And um, a glowing light came out of the ocean and shot to the sky, to the heavens in in a, in, a, in a second. Okay. Wow. Then, um, if you the Madonna painted by I think Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, yeah. If you look in the background, decline that. If you look in the background, there is a guy pointing. He's with his dogs sitting next to him. They're real small. He's, it's because he's far in the background, pointing to the sky, and in the sky there's a flying saucer. In the Madonna, painted before man could fly, um, and there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of, of um, in the pyramids and all, all kind of things of depictions of you know the chariots of the gods uh, that would talk about you know flying um, fire coming from the sky, rocket ships and things like that. So we've been visited before man for for billions of years. I mean, if you can if you know that there's a hundred billion planets right now that they've discovered that could have that could have life what are the odds that we're just the only one it's just not even in a quarter mile make you know, the reasonable person the in favor of that. Boulevard <laughs> using the upcoming left lane you're not in favor of having aliens or what no 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 i mean i agree with you there's got to be i mean there's just no possible world but well, here's how many universe, i guess in which people sense. there's actually infinite lives uh, of civilizations out there New, new worlds that have life. Oh, I'm sure. Because I mean, we can't be close to the most intelligent either. I'm convinced of that. Well, the, the pace and the people that I meet and I interview, the pace of what is happening. There's a guy I interviewed who's, um, his job at MIT or whatever it was is to train atoms to have a memory. So literally he's building an atomic computer. Quantum computer. Even no quantum is just means fast. Oh, atomic. It's part of quantum as well. Monica I'm talking Boulevard. about you take an atom, which you can't see, and you have to have atom. I guess these electronic um, microscopes, right, that can see an atom somehow. And he's trained them to, to have a memory. That's wild. It's very wild. And then another guy I interviewed uh, is his job is to design the rules for the sky for flying. Taxis. Remember, oh man, with like flying cars and drones. Well, remember, and all that remember stuff, the Jetsons? Yeah. yeah, I totally remember. Well, remember there was a traffic jam in the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not gonna happen. There's gonna be no traffic jams in the sky. Well, like people we won't have. be driving. I assume either it'll be correct. Autonomous. All computer driven and all direct flights, right? As the crow flies. Yeah, yeah. And it's gonna be a huge hum of activity above your head. It's gonna be obnoxious. Because it'll be drones, the right they're doing packages, the right cars, motorcycles, street. buses, all flying different directions, and nobody's horse driving it because, you know, it would be it would be a clusterfuck, you know, right here. So there's lots of stuff to look forward to in your life, but I want you to be fantastic. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, and I will. Can you can you adopt it? I can adopt it. I've got I've got. If you stuff, promise man. to Drop adopt it. Heaven. Did you ever join the, um, the, the YouTube yeah, channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got so you your watch YouTube it. subs. Here's a present for you. All right, thanks. Check it out. Let me know if you think that's cool. That's neat. Huh? I said that is neat. Just neat? Okay. That's fantastic. It's fantastic, my friend. Oh, God. I'm...
low hanging fruit there. All right, man. See you. Thank you. Yeah, Evan. Take care. Well, that was 15 minutes of Evan. He says that, uh, that was a third time driving with me, which I have no clue if he's telling the truth or not. I'm going to assume he is telling the truth. Head northwest and, uh, on 7th Street toward Arizona. That Avenue. was another nice conversation with another human being. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. I did. Have a fantastic day, everybody.